So we're with Curtis Thiel at Hard at Work Computers, uh, just south of Seattle in a rural area. And uh, Curtis, appreciate you reaching out as we're putting together the story on the PPP and SMB. And uh, when you reached out, you said you felt like you'd won lotto. So what's uh, what? Let's start from the beginning. What's your story, and why do you feel that way? <laughs> yeah. So you know, the, the simple thing is, you know. I, I read a lot of the different blogs out there and you know different Facebook groups that are for owners of you know companies, not necessarily computer companies, but just companies in general. And the theme that I saw over and over and over is a you know, how do we understand this? You know, as small business owners, I would probably call myself more of a, a micro, you know, small business owner. You know, we don't have full-time accountants, we don't have, you know, all the right technical people on staff, you know, so you know. You know, the, the quote I like to use a lot is, you know, we, you know, we work more on our business, actually more in our business than on our business. So, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's always finding time to make these happen. But the reason why I feel I won the lottery is as I, you know, read through all these things, the lottery piece really refers, you know, I felt I was very lucky that I was at the right bank, that I had a, a fabulous rapport with the staff that knew me by name. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I received funding and, you know, I would say probably maybe 80 to 90% of the other business owners in different sectors, you know, are, are waiting or that we're just flat out denying funding. Yeah. Yeah. Let's back up. So let's, let's go to early April because you have an interesting timeline as to how you got funded. Yeah. So the, the timeline is, um, you, you know, just like everybody else, I'm working away, reading emails. I get an email from my bank saying, Hey, on, uh, I believe it was the, um, April 6th, you know, I got, uh, actually it was before that, but I got an email saying on April 6th, you know, they're going to open up the process that people could apply for funding, you know, and it's, you know, and, and at that point it was probably three or four days before that. Um, but the, that day I emailed, you know, the email link, you know, you know that was on the, the mass email. I said, hey, you know, who do I talk to locally? Then, you know, by chance, the, my personal bank that I bank with in Puyallup, um, like, hey, you need to talk to this person. So I sent an email, you know, just trying to get, I knew that the whole, you know, the, the whole process slowed down as soon as it gets started. So I wanted to be as quick or in front of the queue as much as I could. So I sent an email. And then actually the next day, or you know, within one or two days, I got an email back saying, here's the application, but it's not gonna be open until the six. And then, um, you know, the challenge, like all the other business owners out there, I got busy. So five days went by and to be honest, I thought I probably missed my opportunity just because I was just busy and didn't have the time. And, you know, the day was almost over. It was, you know, five o'clock. And I said, I, you know, I feel like I really need to get this in or I, I won't have the opportunity. I believe I started on the application at six o'clock at night. I didn't finish till 10 o'clock at night. And the reality is, is probably the application is probably about a 30 minute application, but you know, I didn't have all the, I didn't have all the information I needed, all the forms that they were requesting. Now I'm digging through my filing cabinet. You know, my accounting person wasn't around, you know, so, you know, the stress just went through the roof, but luckily, you know, I stayed the course. You know, I figured out what I needed to do. Um, I got the whole packet done. I emailed uh, my personal banker saying it was done. I didn't know what the next step was. The next morning I got an email saying, please just scan it, send it to me. I sent it to her. And then um, I think maybe two days later, I followed up saying, did you get my email? Just, you know, making sure nothing got lost. You know, she didn't go on vacation, just, you know, standard stuff. And then um, I believe about 12 days later, I got a, an email back from her, which was like, you know, that the, the whole process had completed. They've turned, you know, they turned it in, that the next step was the signature uh, process. And, and that was about another seven days to actually sign the document. So that was about day 19. And then uh, in her email, she goes, you know, you should see the, the money in the next day or two. And literally I went on my online heritage bank, went online and there was a big chunk of money that had my name on it, you know. 
and you know, I, you know and it's just like you know and it's just you know i i you know and i i think about the email i sent to her um that day when i saw the money i go crazy but feel very blessed with so many people not getting the money help heritage bank and staff has been amazing to me over many years and so glad i made the switch from quote another big bank i used to be with yeah. yeah my other my other bank great bank but you know very corporate driven and i i don't have a relationship with them and that was probably you know the big reason and very luckily why i moved yeah well i'm gonna end on this because you raised a really valid point that i've hit on in our lecture series over the years and i'm a broken record and all that but what 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 i like and this goes back to the early small business server sbs days is that um small medium businesses right with sbs like working with small business banks and small business clients and so on it's a cultural fit versus uh an example i wrote up in that smb consulting best practices is that large law firms like perkins cooey that represent the boeing company large law firms like large clients right if that that makes sense i mean it's just yeah. culture no it is <laughs> yeah well congratulations my friend and thank you for uh coming on camera with us again we're, we're double clicking into this topic and uh keep up the good work thank you so yeah i feel very blessed and uh you know we continue you know rolling forward and um, you know, the only, you know, you know, I, the one thing I want to add is I probably um, steered probably about 12 other business owners that use different banks to my bank. And I actually got an email two nights ago that one of my friends I was denied at another bank got approved from my, at my bank. Yeah. So, you know, so I guess one of my words of advice that I would encourage people is because your bank denied you, don't stop. You yeah. Know? find another bank, find, you know, banks that, you know, I use Heritage Bank, somebody reaches out to me, I'm happy to give out my person, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, finding somebody that truly cares and that your emails don't go to the crickets. So there we go. All you do, my friend, appreciate it. All right, stay safe, wash your hands. I'm gonna go wash my hands if you don't mind, take care. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna wash mine too. <laughs> all right, Harry. So we're with Daniel Williams of Expedius out of Florida. Daniel, I've known you at least a decade longer. How are you doing, sir, during this pandemic? I hope you're washing your hands. I hope your family's safe. Uh, we are fortunate. Everybody's been safe, and uh, our customers are, for the most part, intact, and uh, everybody is safe, so that's good. Glad to hear you guys are up there, too, in Washington. Yep, yep. I, uh, I've, I've just stayed home, to, to be very honest. Um, so... Uh, Daniel, you have an interesting story on your PPP experience. Go, sir. What is your story? Yeah, it's a it's a bit unusual. Um, we've had a relationship with one of the big national banks. Uh, they've been very good to us uh, over the years. Uh, have a local banker that's dedicated to us, and uh, I, I know his name. I have his email. I have his mobile phone number, and he's done wonders for us. On April fifth, that's a Sunday, he called me to say, "Hey, Dan." The PPP loans are starting tomorrow. Let's get your information in. And I was taken aback that he's calling me on a Sunday, but nevertheless, is very appreciative. We got everything together over about a two-hour span. I signed everything electronically. I submitted all the documents. He gave me a thumbs up. We thought everything looked pretty good. This was the first wave of funding. And um, I saw people starting to get funding, always tending to be the bigger organizations. At least it seemed that way. None of my small business friends indicated that they were funded. And uh, <clears throat> I asked for updates from uh, the big bank, and they would just tell me, you've been approved. You're in the system. Um, you'll get the money before we even know it. So just hang tight. You'll, you'll have the funding. Well, we got to the funding drying up, and all they could tell me was, ah, sorry, we, there was a, too much demand. We couldn't get you funded. There was in the interim period where, Yep. Washington was deciding whether they're going to give us another funding or not. And uh, my accountant called me just to say, hey, haven't talked to you in a few weeks. What's going on? And uh, the PPP came up and I told him, hey, uh, we, we didn't make it. Uh, our, our big bank was un, unable to get us funded. 
he indicated to me that uh, 102 of 106 clients that he personally walked through the process with their local bank uh, were funded. And, and um, Daniel, let me, let, let me interrupt you. Just to be clear, uh, we're talking about your CPA at this point, J just to be clear. Correct. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, my CPA, that's right. And um, <clears throat> we kind of hung up and, you know, I was almost bummed going like, holy cow, he got his clients funded. I should have gone to him instead of my banking relationship. Well, he called me later that night and just said, Dan, I talked to the manager of the branch. Get me all of your data tomorrow morning at the latest, and I'm going to get it submitted to him. And, and, this and is a he's going to find bank. a way to get you pushed through. Right. Da Daniel, this is a different bank. This is the community bank, the local community bank that my CPA uses. Oh, okay, go on, go on. Great, great sure. story. <laughs> and and this was the uh, Thursday night, Friday morning before uh, funding round two started, which was this last past Monday. So I gave him all my data. I was concerned. Uh, I, I I have children. I have four of them. I didn't want to go to jail for submitting two PPP loan applications. So <laughs> I was a little nervous if the big bank put it in. And the small bank put it in what would happen, and the manager assured me that uh, whichever one got there first would be the one that prevailed, and the other one would not be allowed to be entered, so there would be no double dipping. So I felt a little more comfortable that way. So uh, Monday uh, was the, the you know the round started, and of course it was uh, according to the new, all news accounts was uh, not a very good day. The system crashed multiple times. Yep. Uh, the SBA system, that is, for receiving the applications from the banks. Uh, apparently, the, my CPA's small community bank branch manager was up at 2 in the morning and realized finally the system was up and staying up. And he stayed up all night uh, typing in applications, including ours. And uh, Monday, well, actually Tuesday morning, we got word that w our funding was approved and that we would have the funds in the next several days. So what seemed to me to be we weren't going to get any money based on what was happening with the big bank, uh, the little bank came through in record time for us. And, uh, you know, as an organization for us, we have several folks on payroll, and that funding was going to be what helps us maintain everybody on payroll. Not all of our jobs right now are doing much, sales in particular, for instance, because uh, there's not much selling going on right now. So this enables us to keep all of our workers uh, happily employed and and being productive for the company, even in this tough time. Yeah, yeah, no, congratulations on uh, making that happen. And, and and again, I've known you for over a decade and, uh, you know, the first words that come to mind with you or after the word fun would be ethical. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah, and so I, you know, I, I, I salute you, sir, for taking advantage of the funding opportunity for the right reasons to, keep people uh, on staff and, um, you know, maybe, hey, they're welcome to come join me and clear out the SMB Nation mini storage. I'm trying to purge a bunch of uh, accounting records. <laughs> uh, too funny. All right. Take care, Daniel. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thanks so much. You guys have a good day. Take care. Stay safe. We're with Dan King from K Squared Technologies of Gillette, Wyoming, to talk about the Payroll Protection Program, the PPP, and his particular experience with a, a special tip of the hat to small banks. So, Dan, you were driving from Texas to Wyoming. Get it from there. What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we were actually, we spent spring break in Texas and spent a couple of extra week in Texas. Uh, and then we were on our way, and of course, Kind of leading up to that, Congress was uh, were making decisions at that point, uh, and uh, actually we made it to Amarillo, which is normally our halfway stopping point, uh, heading back to Wyoming. Uh, and uh, I I had a few conversations with my banker that night. Uh, I have a personal relationship with my banker. We bank with a kind of a medium sized regional bank, a small to medium sized regional bank. 
and I truly think that helped a lot with us getting pushed through or getting through the application process. Uh, we were ready to fill out the application on Friday. Of course, the SBA, uh, they were waiting on some information from the SBA uh, in order to start processing. So she just told me, hold tight, I'll get with you on Monday. And she, sure enough, she got with me on Monday. Uh, we filled out the paperwork, sent her the reports that she needed, the payroll reports that she needed. Uh, and on Thursday, I started getting a little nervous because I hadn't heard anything. And a lot of others were reporting out there in the world that they had already gotten funded on Wednesday. Uh, so Thursday, I reached out again. She did hold tight. We've got it. We've got it in. And uh, sure enough, Thursday afternoon, we heard from uh, the SBA that everything was approved. And I think we had money in the bank on Monday. So, so my big point of everything is to really make sure that you have a personal relationship with a bank or multiple banks uh, to be able to have an, an actual conversation with them to help you through that. Uh, it always surprises me these companies that aren't getting funded that are banking with a big bank and they, they don't even know who in the world they can actually call. And to me, I think as a business person, um, I think that's a, a mistake for us to do. Well, congratulations on your success. I mean, we're all in this together and, uh, you know, I, I applaud. Um, and thanks for sharing those insights because I, I concur. We work with a, uh, a small bank on Bainbridge Island and that's made a, a big difference. I think I moved over to them 12 years ago. Uh, very pleased and to your point, it's all about the relationship. Yep, absolutely. It sure is, Harry. Thank you for reaching out and uh, allowing me to share my story. All righty. Thank you. So I'm with Claude Thorpe out of Katy, Texas, who uh, has a variety of roles down in the Houston area, uh, business development at Sierra Hamilton, a volunteer at the Hub, and one or two other things. So Claude, good morning. It's May Day. Welcome, and thanks for joining us on the PPP Conversation. Good morning, Harry. Good to be here. All right. So, uh, sir, you raised your hand when I put out a call for uh, speakers, so to speak, um, about uh, what's going on with the payroll protection program. And it sounds like with your, the variety of uh, roles you have, you have a couple of different perspectives. So I'm just going to put it out there. What, what's the story? How have you been involved with your different entities? What is the story? So I am a, a volunteer in a nonprofit uh, called The Hub. My daughter happens to work there. It's a, uh, it's a place that helps young autistic adults, and she runs the job program. Uh, I'm also a, a very part-time CFO for a staffing company here in town. And then okay. I'm with the business and do business development for Sierra Hamilton. I saw early on that that the PPP program, even before it was totally passed, might be something that would be very helpful for the hub as well as the staffing company and for the company I work for. And so it was directly helpful in, in, in getting the applications done for uh, both the hub and the staffing company and was had input into our Sierra Hamilton application. Yeah, and I, let's talk about Sierra Hamilton for a second. By the way, thanks for the good work that you do. Uh, that's uh, admirable. Um, Sierra Hamilton is, uh, I believe you told me, sort of in the oil field services or oil sector of the economy. So it's a little bit of a double whammy. So has the uh, PPP funding uh, allowed people to, to stay employed and not have to go on unemployment? So, yes, it absolutely has. And the primary piece here is that we have several of our consultants that are our W-2 employees that, that are no longer working for clients. And uh, because of rigs being dropped and completion group teams being dropped. So during this time, we're able to continue to pay them their uh, base salary. Uh, at least until June 15th, and hopefully at that time, uh, business will come back and, and we can keep these people working. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's great. And then I uh, want to change the topic uh, slightly about your opinion on large bank versus small bank with the PPP program. What are your, what are your insights on that? 
both uh, actually the the staffing company that I'm a, a part time CFO has been doing banking with a, uh, a local small bank here in town that does SBA loans, and also had some knowledge of the hub, and so they not only took the application of the hub, which is where there was no prior banking relationship, but it, but the the bank president there, Ron Majeski, who is really cares about his clients, uh, he uh, made sure that 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 all of the data was taken right. He actually entered. I know. Uh, the applications on a Saturday. Uh, and if it wasn't for him and a small bank relationship, I don't think this would have would have ever happened. I can't imagine the company who has banked at, at a Bank of America or Wells Fargo with, with very little interaction with their local banker uh, getting this right, uh, getting the application right. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we've been hearing across the board. And uh, as you well know, SMB Nation. Well, of course, SMB stands for Small Medium Business. So we're 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 thrilled. We're thrilled because you know we're a community of small and medium businesses in the tech sector, and and the fact that you can have a, a strong relationship with the banker, a small bank, a regional bank, uh, that 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 aligns with the way we roll, um, most certainly. Well, Claude, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to circle back to you maybe in a month, month and a half. We're going to stay on this story, but let's uh, let's reconvene in about a month and get an update from you on what's going on uh, from your perspective with the uh, the funding and, and, and other topics of interest. Sure appreciate your time and uh, keep the air conditioning on down in uh, the Houston area. I'm, I'm assuming it's starting to get a little warm. It, uh, we may have 100 degrees later uh, next week is what we're hearing. So, yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Harry. And we're back. We're with Stuart Boyle of uh, Reedbone Consulting out of uh, the state of Washington. So, uh, Stuart, it's May Day. Happy Friday. Happy May Day. There we go. Um, normally there'd be parades and stuff going around in Seattle. Yeah. But hey, uh, quickly, um, I appreciate you raising your hand as we're investigating uh, what the payroll protection program looks like to small and medium businesses, and in particular MSPs. Um, and you've had an interesting experience. You've had a couple of, uh, I'm gonna call it attack vectors um, into getting funding. Uh, so take it from the top. What what verbs what actions have you taken so uh my consulting business pretty much uh stopped at the beginning of february my clients um a lot of them are in the healthcare industry and they knew that something was up and just their priorities shifted almost immediately um so very quickly the first week of april um i had applied for the small business uh, loan the eidl loan um did not at that time um, apply for unemployment, uh, was trying to find about PPP, um, and uh, along the road also applied for the uh, Jay Inslee's, uh, the governor's um, loan uh, for yep. in Inside Kitsap County. Uh, yep. The Small Business uh, Administration has never gotten back to me. Um, I do know that my uh, uh, number begins with a three, so that I'm, I was after the glitch in their system. Because if you filed in March, then you got dropped off and you had to reapply. Uh, no one can tell me where it is in the queue. It's in the queue. Uh, the PPP, when it came out, um, we just happened to be at our credit union and found out from the manager that they are they were going to accept PPP loans. Uh, when I talked with him about that, I got mixed messages. Yes, we're going to be accepting applications, but then at the same time, I'm a single person shop. I'm just an LLC. I'm not a I'm not big money. I don't have staff. Um, it was just kind of like, yeah, you can apply, but don't really know where that'll go. 
uh, once I finally learned that uh, UI was really going to come through, I applied for the unemployment insurance. You can't fi file for unemployment and PPP at the same time. So we sat down and made a conscious choice. The probability that we'd get unemployment as opposed to PPP is higher, so I went with the unemployment. Um, that's been wrought with its own set of challenges. Uh, at first, we were told to apply, but apply for as standby before um, the Corona-19 uh, adaptations were made to the website. Uh, I did that and then have uh, been continuing to apply every week. I've uh, been paid for two weeks, been denied seven weeks, and have three weeks pending. Uh, I, the, the website doesn't uh, it doesn't allow you to put a zero dollar amount in the hours worked but does allow you to put a zero dollar amount in the dollars revenue made for a self-employed company. Yeah. Uh, when it, and my, I've sent this off to some of our state representatives and to other folks, you know, the issue comes about what is work? Am I working right now? Yes. So, okay, so if I'm working right now, I have to declare those hours. Well, I was denied the unemployment uh, for seven weeks because I listed, I'm working, I'm networking, I'm trying to do the best I can to, to bring money in, but there's no money coming in, but I'm an entrepreneur and I'm supposed to be creative, I'm supposed to be able to adapt, and that just hasn't seemed to have been enough. I've appealed, yeah. uh, or I'm in the process of appealing those. Um, I've sent an email, sent an e-service uh, notification, um, that was last week, um, five to ten weeks to get an answer back, or sorry, five to 10 days to get an answer back. Um, I got an email back, gave me a telephone number to call, call the, the number, it doesn't, it picks up the phone and hangs it back up again. Yeah. It doesn't really answer the phone. When you call the normal unemployment number, it tells you that, well, sorry, we're experiencing a high number of calls, uh, please call back later, and then hangs up on you. So yes. it's been a pretty frustrating couple of months. Um, coming up on, this will be my fourth month where I've made no revenue. Yeah. But I'm, you know, Google still wants its money. Microsoft still wants its money. Zoom still wants its money for all the services they provide for me. Um, technically, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know where this this work thing is going to fall out. No, this is this is a really interesting interview, and thank you for your uh, candor um, because it's it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a different interview, um, and, and, and I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate everything you're doing. A lot of our audience is is exactly you, a, a one-person entrepreneurial uh, enterprise, if you will, or entity, uh -huh. and, and I, I myself have wondered how one would navigate that when you're self-employed versus employed um, right. in a real company. So the, the real company stories that, that we have as part of this investigation they're pretty straightforward. A uh, couple commonalities, working with a, a small financial institution is to your advantage instead of one of the mm -hmm. large national banks. So there's some commonalities. But I'd like to check back in with you um, in, in, in a few weeks uh, and see where you're at and what your journey is taking you on because um, you, you have a very interesting story. We I certainly wish you luck. And, and with, with that, what I would tell you is uh, I am convinced with my own little company, SMB Nation, um, we have to innovate our way out of this, right? Yes. There's, yep. there's no, uh, it, dude, I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got to innovate my way out of this next two years or so. Uh, I I suspect you'll do the same, but uh, boy, howdy, who ordered this? Huh? It's, yeah. Uh, in, in a lot of respects, as I've been uh, trying to reimagine the company, I'm fortunate. I have typically work remotely. I'm disabled. So my driving ability is limited. Um, and what I do does not always require that I'm, I'm with somebody. A lot of training that I do, I do online. Uh, the right. utilities I build are remote. I can remote in and take care of those utilities that I, uh, that I, I build and maintain. So um, that that gives me a leg up on some people um, that have to be in person, but yet it's still different. There's got to be somebody on the other end to talk to. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, and, and again, I, I not only wish you the best, but I appreciate your uh, honesty and candor on this interview. We're going to circle back to you in late May and okay. see how you're doing. Perfect. Uh, let your, us know. your videos have always been really helpful. I, I really enjoy watching your stuff. You bring in really interesting people and keep me in touch um, with people that I can't get out and meet with normally, which is very helpful. Yeah. All right. Let, let us know how we can help you, sir. Have a nice Friday. Awesome. Thank you. Thank sure. you, Harry. Thanks, Jenny. Take care.